Hi, if you've already watched one of my other core practical videos, I'm really glad you found it useful enough to click play on this one. But you can skip the first minute, so scroll along. If you haven't zoomed forward, welcome to this core practical video. It's part of a series of videos which I'm hoping will help you to focus on each of the Edexcel Physics GCSE core practicals. For double science students, you only need seven out of the eight, so please skip number four, thermal energy. This is only for the triple scientists. Triples, you need all eight. Assessment of practical work is included as part of the final exams. A minimum of 15% of the total marks must be allocated to questions related to these core practicals. So, I hope you find the video useful and I hope it helps you to revise the experiment that you will have done in your lessons. The eighth and final core practical is to investigate the extension and work done when applying forces to a spring. The Edexcel description says the stretching of a spring must be investigated by measuring the length of a spring with no weights, followed by adding varying masses and measuring the new length. This must include a calculation of the work done and an appreciation of the forces involved. I've set my equipment up here and I've set the zero of the ruler level with the bottom of the unstretched spring. This is to help me focus just on the extension without having to keep subtracting the original length. I measured the length of the unstretched spring to be at two centimetres. There are a couple of safety precautions you need to take with this practical. It is important to wear goggles because just in case the spring snaps, you don't want to end up with a metal splinter in your eye. I also took the time to find a couple of heavy books and weight down the retort stand to make sure that it didn't topple over once I was loading more force onto the spring. I carefully added a 100 gram mass to the spring. Now 100 grams divided by 1000 to put it into kilograms and times by 10 for one newton per kilogram of gravity acting on that mass means that every time I add a 100 gram mass I'm adding a one newton force to the spring. When I add the masses or the force I do it in a way to try and keep the spring steady to get an accurate reading. And I also, by having my hand underneath the force, I make sure that I don't pull down on the spring and exert more than the force that I'm adding. When I take the reading for extension against the ruler, I'm always using the same point of reference on the spring, which is the bottom straight part of the spring. You can see it at 3.1 centimetres here. I repeated readings until I had gone through to a range of 7 newtons on the spring, going up 1 newton at a time. Um, at 8 newtons, the spring's extension was too long to measure on my 30 centimetre ruler, and so I stopped at 7 newtons. In between each reading, I removed the force to check whether there was any permanent deformation of the spring. Every time I checked, it did go back to zero. And here are all of my results for that first spring. For each of my readings I also need to calculate the energy that's transferred to the spring. Energy is needed to stretch the spring and energy is always transferred when a force moves through a distance. So when the force moves through the distance of the extension of the spring, work is done. However, when you stretch a spring, the force needed increases as the extension increases. So the equation is a little bit more complicated than force times distance. And to use it, I'm going to first need to work out the spring constant for my spring, K, in the equation. Now, because the force is the spring constant times the extension, Rearranged, that must mean that the spring constant can be found by doing the force divided by the extension. I've measured these two things. I've changed the force 
and I've measured the extension. So if I draw a graph with the force on the y-axis and the extension on the x-axis, my gradient is going to be k, the spring constant. And so here is the graph that I drew. You can see my data is really reliable from that one set of results. There's a really clear pattern through the points to make my line of best fit. Clearly going through 0, 0, you can see from the line of best fit um, a doubling pattern. If you double the force, you double the extension. Force and extension being directly proportional to each other. The spring constant then is calculated from the gradient so that the spring constant is found and it's 25 newtons per metre. And now I know the spring constant for my spring, I can work out the work done as each force is added to that spring. Then I had to repeat the experiment for a different spring. Now I used the spring in this newton metre. It's a stiffer spring and it was a little bit tricky to read through the plastic, but I got on OK with it. Because it was a stiffer spring, it was harder to extend, and so I could add all the way up to 10 newtons and still have plenty of room on my ruler. And I do a graph of my results so that I could calculate the spring constant, which I then used to work out the work done as each force was added to that spring. Comparing my first spring here with the spring constant of 25 newton metres with the second spring here with the spring constant of 307 newton metres, I can see that for both metal springs the force is directly proportional to the extension. I can see that the stiffer spring had a higher spring constant. The second spring, the stiffer spring, was harder to extend. But both springs obey Hooke's law. They're both obeying the law because I did not reach the elastic limit of either spring. And looking at my results for the work done, it's clear from both springs that the greater the extension, the more work is done. But for the same force, the stiffer spring transfers less energy because even though the spring constant k is greater for it, it doesn't extend by very much. And so x squared, the extension squared, is small. So for any spring, to extend it further, you'll need to apply a greater downward force. You'll have to do more work to it. You'll have to transfer more energy to it. And I think that completes the series on core practicals. That was core practical eight, and you know that. Regular, Regular review gets a better grade for you. you. Don't forget to like so that I can keep making the videos. Comment, especially to request other revision topics. Subscribe. So you can get notifications of when my next video gets uploaded. <laughs>